Okay, hello. Let's do a short video on how to plot a field output variable on a specific path. So I'm going to go through a traditional non indentation example. If you're interested in how this model was created and how it was ran, you can look at the video on the top. But in this case, I'm just going to post process from whatever we have got from the last run. So as you can see, this was a non indentation test and I think it's repeating, that's why you see it uh, keep going on in a loop. So I'm just gonna make it one. So you see it just goes, initially it starts from there and then it indents. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a path. You can have a path along this line, this line, whatever surface, you know. So, and you want to plot a specific field variable. Let's say I want to see how elastic strain varies along a specific path. So you will have to select few things. So you go to tools, or you can go to XY data, create. And then in that case, in this case, you will select a path. Now, when you press continue, you will get this window and you need to have a path already here, which you can use a priority. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back, I will cancel this, and I will first create a path. So I'll go to the path manager, and as you can see, we don't have any path here. So I will create a new path. Sorry, it's going to the other screen all the time, but this is way, and again, you can use pointless, node list, you can use this edge, you can use a circular. In this case, I'm gonna use a node list. And by node list, what you can do is you can basically select or give the numbers of the nodes if you already know. In this case, I'm gonna click on this and you can select and or after, and you can select from viewport or you can select a node set from somewhere else. I'm going to do this and now I'm going to zoom in. And let's say I will start from this node and I want to go, let's say, I'm just selecting an arbitrary path in this case along this one. So it's, you see it's, it's creating a path and it gives you a kind of a view as well. And you, as you click on the next point, it, the end point becomes that one. So I will create, let's say, until, until this point, after that it all becomes almost zero. So I'm not interested in that. So I have created this kind of arbitrary path. I'll press done. And once I have done, I will have this path here, path one. So now I'm gonna go back to tools and I'm gonna to go to XY data, start with manager. As you can see, we have nothing there. I will say create, I will say along a path. Now I will see, you will see that I already have one path. So you can see it there and when it's selected, it shows you there. If you have multiple paths, so you can select any one of them on this drop down list. I'm gonna do it for, you can plot the data or field output for a case when it's deformed, like in this case, or you can also do it for undeformed case. In that case, it will take the original positions and it will plot along those original positions. So in this case, I'm gonna go with a deformed position. And again, you can say path points or you can say uniform spacing. So it will, if you only select two points and it will draw a straight line most probably, and then it will interpolate and equally spaced points based on the number of intervals you select. In this case, it was easier for me to select the number of points. So that's what I have done here. I'm gonna go with the two distances. You can have a normalized distance or something like this as well. Again, you can have other options so you can play around with that. They're very much self-explanatory. You can click on this button, which will give you some tips as well with what each of these variables really mean we see here. So, and then obviously we have which time increment or at what point in the analysis you want to plot that so you can select it from here and you click on a step frame then you can see throughout the analysis from zero until the total time of 1.5 you have many number of steps or increments so let's say we're going to do it for some intermediate state at state 14. so i'll plot i will select that and then you see it says 14. and again you can select different field variables in this case i'm going to plot a equivalent plastic strain Okay, so once I have done that, I will just say plot and abracadabra, you see you have a plot along the true distance and 
And this is how the plastic strain decreases as you move away from that top corner, top left corner towards the thing where it was almost becoming zero. So you can go back again there and you can also save this data. Right? If you say save, then you can save it X, Y data. Let's say we call it frame 14 because it's for frame 14. Now what we can do, we can change it to, let's say last frame. And now if you again save and we call it frame 20, and that should become like this. And now I can plot these two frames together and you can see how they look like. So in this case, you see there is not much variation after a certain amount of time, but uh, let's try another one maybe to get some feel of it. So if I start and select, let's say a very starting frame, let's say frame one. And if I now plot first and then save it as frame one, then what you will see now is if I frame one and 14, then you see there's a difference. So if you start with lower strain, and as the indenter goes down, your plastic strain around that indented area increases. And after some time, it seems like it's saturating. Let's try another one at around, for example, we plotted 14, so that's for 17. Save, and then we got it frame 17. And now if I plot 17 and 14, they should be very much the same. As you see, they're, they're basically after certain frames, it's saturating. Uh, or maybe the boundary conditions were just relaxing, so it didn't go much in the deformation stage. So this is how you can plot. So you see your inventor was going like this, and so was the animation. And if you want to see along a path, so you can plot at different time increments along a specific path, and this is, and it can show you how the strains are developing along a certain path if you're really much trying to quantify the data. So that's pretty much it. I hope it made sense. So don't forget to support me if you can. And the model, the same model is already available on, my, on, on our website. So you can go to www.professor3mac.com and you can download most of our models which we show in our videos. So good luck with everything. If you have any other thing which you are struggling with, please comment below and I will try to make a video out of it. Thank you very much.